Hey guys, how are you today? This is Jim Prusak, physical therapist at The Pain PT. And today I'm going to talk to you guys about the pain cycle and the body's alarm system. And I got a couple graphics here to show you guys um, how this works so you can have a better understanding of your own system and how your brain and your nervous system can impact pain and become the central driver to your pain instead of the issues in the tissues, we call it. Instead of having a localized tissue injury, we can have a brain and nervous system that essentially ramps up or keeps pain going because it becomes hypersensitive. So let's go over some of this stuff. I'm going to show you two infographics here that were produced by the um, Orthopedic Physical Therapy Association, International Spine and Pain Institute. Now I'm going to show you this first piece here. This is what we call the pain cycle. Okay. So as you can read there, pain is a complex, it's very complex and involves many systems. Tissue issues are only one system, yet as we know, so much of our treatment focus, as you see for many medical people, focuses on the tissues only. But in response to pain and stress, various chemicals that get produced have an effect on your thoughts, emotions, tissues, and overall well-being. As you drop down here and look at this image, what you're going to see here is this is essentially the pain cycle, okay? So we can have an injury, we can have a sprain, we can be post-surgical, we can have some type of pain in our tissue, somewhere in our body. And what happens is that information gets sent from your nerves to your brain, which is the central computer and all this. Now, what's stored in our brain and how we operate in our brain has a major impact, can have a massive impact on how we feel in our body. So things they talk about here, uh, such family issues, how we think about our treatments, the knowledge we have and the understanding of our condition, if we believe that it's physical um, versus knowing that it could be more than just that, that it could be brain and nervous system. Um, fear, we talk a lot about fear already. Um, job stress, our beliefs, again, what we believe about ourselves. All these different things that are in Inside your own brain uh, impact or mix with a signal that can come from your body okay and that mixing of these two things is, can cause either uh, an amplification of pain or a persistence of pain or it can cause what's called a descending inhibition or more relaxation into pain or calming down of pain so as you can see these things in our own brain if there's things going on that are stressors we're stressed we worry a lot we catastrophize, we have uh, suppressed emotions. Um, what this can do is cause stress chemicals, as you can see here. And at the top, it's going to cause a bunch of changes that can affect things and cause depression, memory issues, change in appetite, mood swings, sleep changes, loss of concentration. And again, these stress chemicals just go around back into your body from your brain and can make you become more sensitized. Okay, that's called central sensitization. It's when we become more sensitized, we become more, maybe more fatigued, and then we become deconditioned. And then again, that loops around back to your brain. So we do this, what's called the pain cycle loop, where it can become a vicious cycle and we end up stuck in this. Okay, so the linchpin in this is to change what? Is to change not the tissues, but to change the brain. Okay, so the brain can change its signaling back through your nervous system and back to your tissues. Okay, so that's things like we talk about all the time, dropping catastrophizing, dropping worrying, changing your beliefs through knowledge and understanding this condition, knowing you're not broken, knowing you're not damaged, knowing this is more of a condition of your brain, working on expressing, acknowledging emotions that maybe you don't naturally do, changing things that put more stress on yourself, like people pleasing, perfectionism, working out stresses you have in your life through job, through family, reducing stress, calming, relaxing. All these things are going to change this pain cycle to where you're going to get different uh, messaging coming out of your brain back into your body. That's what we want. We want different messaging from your brain back into your body. Okay, so that's what we're looking for. I'm going to show you one other uh, infographic here along the same lines that shows you what happens when you get caught in this pain cycle. 
what happens is we get what's called a sensitized nervous system, okay? The nervous system is known as the body's alarm system. And as you can see here, the body's nervous system works like an alarm system. Uh, when the alarm is activated, it sends a message to your brain for action, okay? So the signals come from your periphery, from your body, through your nervous system, up to your brain. And typically, once the action is taken, when you receive the message of, let's say, pain or something like that, the alarm system in our bodies is designed to calm back down, settles back down. But with people that are struggling with, with pain or chronic pain or persistent systems, symptoms, the alarm system does not calm down all the way and can remain extra sensitive. Okay, so this is just in alignment with what I was talking to you guys before about how the brain plays into this alarm system. Okay, the brain signals through the alarm system or nervous system and output. And that can cause the system to become hypersensitive and stay sensitive. So you see the picture up here on the top. Uh, you know, before you have pain or before you have symptoms, um, your, your system's pretty settled, okay? It can be pretty settled. You have lots of room for activities where you're not triggered. Uh, nothing, nothing causes a problem. And then after something happens, the alarm system gets activated. It shoots up, sends a message to your brain from your body. And during that time, uh, you're going to have less room for activities, right? So the, let's say it's a real injury, a uh, real tissue sprain, something like that. You're going to pull back. You're going to do a little bit less. You're going to have pain, but that pain should start to go back down. Okay, so as you can see over here, the pain starts to naturally go back down. The nervous system, alarm system goes back down as well uh, and settles back to a normal level. Okay, but with chronic pain, what happens is that alarm system stays elevated so that you have still little room for activities and you actually become extra sensitive where you become triggered a lot easier. So we see this in people with allodynia where they're hypersensitive to touch. So basically you can offer a very light touch on their skin and they'll have a very, very strong sensitive reaction of pain. People that don't handle massage well, people that have food insensitivities, um, same thing with movement. We talked about that, kinesiophobia, fear of movement. So our alarm system can stay elevated and stay activated in chronic pain. And so very normal things like normal activities you do, walking, sitting, standing, can cause this system to fire up more because it's already resting at a high level. The resting state is not back to normal. It's not back into that rest and digest parasympathetic nervous system, it's elevated into that fight or flight system and stays up there. So again, we come back to how can we get this alarm system to settle back down? How can we get this to happen? Now we come back to the brain again, because the brain is a central computer and all this. And so we need to shift our brain patterns in relation to what's going on. And like I said before, some of the things that we want to do is we need to understand first through knowledge what's going on and that a lot of times chronic pain and chronic issues are not a problem in the localized tissue. It is an issue in the brain and nervous system. So we need to change our thoughts, we need to change our beliefs, change our messaging around what's happening, shifting our perception that something is wrong in me to something is not wrong. Learning how to deal with your physical symptoms so that you don't play into them more, you don't amplify them more, you don't react to them more, you don't catastrophize, worry, ruminate, become hypervigilant. Okay, these are all brain patterns here we're talking about that make the pain worse. Returning to normal physical activities, stop avoiding things like we talked about in other videos, that helps to also teach your brain or teach your nervous system and alarm system that something is normal again and that it can start to calm down. Um, like I said before, in the beginning a lot of times you may get a flare up because that alarm system is already elevated and it doesn't take very much for it to be set off. But it doesn't mean something's wrong. It just means that there's a hypersensitive reaction. We also need to look at our emotions. We know emotional suppression and repression plays into amplified pain. It amplifies your alarm system as well. So when we're avoiding emotions, emotional expression, things like that, we're going to potentially stay amplified. This can come from things like trauma in the past. It can come from current stressors we're dealing with now in our life. Big ones being relationships, jobs, our family, finances, 
All these things, if there's additional stress, can amplify the alarm system in our bodies through the brain. We can have these other internal stressors. Again, internal stressors are what we create ourselves through our brain, which is our thoughts and our beliefs and how we think about something, how we respond to something. So I want you guys to really think more deeply about your brain and nervous system being a central component to your pain or to your chronic symptoms and start to use some of these techniques and tools we're talking about here uh, to heal and that you're thinking about it more from that global level than from the localized uh, issue in your tissues where the pain is, where the pain is located. It's not typically where the problem is located, the chronic type stuff. All right, guys, if you got questions or you got comments, put them here. And um, we'll talk to you guys next time. Take care. Bye-bye.